students, I am Mrs. Helen Freya and welcome to this online video. In this crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people feel that they have lost control. But that's a perception. Even amidst of this pandemic situation, you can choose to focus on what you are interested and motivated. I hope that you have already started learning the other subjects. Come, now let's start to focus with chemistry, the second chapter, acid, bases and salts. To begin with, let me ask you one question. If someone in your family is suffering from the problem of acidity, what would you give them? A lemon juice, a vinegar, antacid or a baking soda solution? Yes, I guessed. You would have told a baking soda solution or an antacid, isn't it? Surely, you must have used your knowledge about the ability of an acid and bases to nullify each other's effect. To learn the further subtopic of this chapter, let us recall some of the properties of acids and bases. Have you ever tasted citrus fruits like lemon? How do you feel it? The taste of it. So you feel it sour, isn't it? Yes. What is present in that? Usually citrus fruit like lemon contains citric acid and the lime acid, citric acid. So all the acid taste sour. So acids are sour in taste. And bases. Have you ever tasted a soap solution or a piece of soap? How does it taste? It tastes bitter, exactly. So, the bases are bitter in taste. Only by tasting can we say this is acid and this is bases. Is there any other way? Yes, definitely there is a way. Using some natural indicators. One such natural indicator is litmus. Now, let's perform an activity. Now, I have a litmus. A blue color litmus. Now I am going to take a soap. Can you see? Let me scratch on the soap using a litmus. What's happening? Do you see any change in its color or anything else? Nothing. Let me try the same blue litmus with the lemon. What is happening here? Can you make it out? Yes. There is a change in color. Exactly. The blue litmus paper has changed into a red. So what happens here? Acid changes. Blue litmus to red. You got it? Now let me take another litmus. litmus. Now let me try this with the lemon. Can you notice any change in this? No. A red litmus, I have poured few drops of lemon juice. That is citric acid. Any change in this? No. Okay. Now let me try this with the soap. There's a change in the color. Can you notice there's a change? A red litmus has changed into a blue color. Can you notice? Slightly it is getting changed. Exactly. So what is happening here is bases turn red litmus to blue. The next, acids. Acids are sticky. I repeat, acids are sticky, whereas bases are slippery. You might have experienced, whenever there is a soap solution or a soap, when you try to walk on it, you feel 
slightly slippery. So bases are slightly slippery and acids are sticky. That's why acids when they stick on to certain metals, it starts corroding them. That is gradually it destroys the material because of the presence of the acidic compounds. The next. Acids conduct electricity. Whereas bases also conducts electricity. Both acids and bases are electrolytes. That means they are the good conductors of electricity. And when acids are dissolved in water, they produce positively charged ion, hydrogen ion, H plus ions. Similarly, when bases are dissolved in water, they produce negatively charged ions, hydroxide ions, OH negative ions. Got it? And when acid reacts with metal, it is highly reactive with metals. When it reacts with metals, it gives it gives respective salts and hydrogen gas. Similarly, bases also reacts with certain metals, not with all the metals. Certain metals it reacts, it produces respective bases and produces hydrogen gas. So bases reacts with certain metals to produce hydrogen gas. Got it? Now when you observe all these properties of acids and bases, which one seems to be common in both? Can you guess it? Can you see? Yes, no doubt in that. This is the one. Conduction of electricity. Both acids and bases conduct electricity. Yes, there is an activity for this. In page number 22, activity 2.8 and the figure is 2.3. Come, let's see the activity. Now what the activity 2.8 tells? It tells us, take a beaker. Take a beaker. Take a rubber cock. Take a rubber cock in it, fix it up. To this rubber cock, fix two iron nails. Fix two iron nails. Let me connect the ends of the iron nails to a 6 volt battery. And then to a bulb. Then to a switch. Got it? It's a 6 volt battery. Again I repeat, take a beaker, take a rubber cock, to this rubber cock fix two iron nails, attach it to a 6 volt battery, to a bulb and a switch. Now with this we have to take four solutions. One is glucose. First fill this beaker with a glucose solution. When you fill this with a glucose solution, you can see that the bulb never grows when you switch on. The bulb never grows. Now, remove this glucose and fill it with alcohol. Again with the alcohol solution, if you switch on, the bulb will not glow. I repeat, the bulb will not glow. Now next is, check out with the hydrochloric acid, that is HCl. Now fill this beaker with a solution of hydrochloric acid and switch on. Once you switch on, you can see that the bulb glows. Right? Next, let me try with another solution. That is sodium hydroxide solution. It is not there in the activity, but I am giving what is common in both the acid and the bases. So I am taking sodium hydroxide solution too. So once that sodium hydroxide solution is filled, again the bulb glows. How is that? When glucose is added, the bulb never glows. When alcohol is added, the bulb never glows. But when we have the solution of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, the bulb glows. What is happening over here? Come back here. Acid and bases. Name some of the acids. I will name HCl, hydrochloric acid, 
sulfuric acid and uh, say nitric acid HNO3. Few acids. Name some of the bases. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide. In this acid if you observe this H is common. That is the acid version it dissociates into cations. Cations. That is H plus ions. ions. That is H plus positively charged hydrogen ions. And this hydrogen ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity as well as they decide the acidic nature of acid. Similarly, come on to the basis side. If you observe the spaces, you can observe this common OH, OH. That is hydroxide. So when bases are dissolved in water to get the aqueous solution, we get hydrogen oxide, negatively charged hydrogen oxide ions. This OH negative ions are responsible for the conduction of electricity as well as they decide the basic nature of the bases. Now you know why acid and bases conduct electricity? It is because of the presence of the cation that is H plus and this OH minus. And that's it about the activity 2.8. With this, I have completed the first unit of this chapter. The remaining units I will be completing in the coming videos. Till then, children, I have attached a PDF file. Please copy the notes and draw the diagrams. I request all the parents to monitor your children's classwork and acknowledge them by your sign. Till then, I meet you with the next video. Signing off. Bye-bye and thank you. Thank you.